this particular rank and this particular income in the next 60 days. I said, great. What's the consequence if you don't do it? I'm going to shave off my eyebrows. I'll shave off both my eyebrows if I don't do it. I said, great. Now, what do we have for daily accountability? Because there has to be a minimum of activity. So, for example, if you know, so people have asked me a lot. First of all, I get this question and I know some of you all get the, the, the same question. Anybody here that 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 appreciates their temple? And they take really good care of themselves because they know it was it was a gift. It wasn't anything that they necessarily earned. It was a gift. Well, then people, you know, ask me, say, what do you do? I said, well, you know, part of what I do is I'm a trainer. Oh, you're what do they always say? What's, what's the first thing they say when I tell them I'm a trainer? What do they assume I mean by that? What do you all think they say? Oh, you're a personal trainer. Can you help me lose some? Weight? No, I'm not a physical. No, I'm not a personal trainer. I'm a corporate trainer. I'm a sales trainer. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So people are, are they're, they're making these assumptions based on the fact that I don't take any, any days off because I have a daily uh, level of accountability when it just comes to that. I'm not even talking about business. I'm talking about my freaking life. There's a level of accountability that I hold myself to, okay? So I say to him, what are your, what's your daily goal? What's your daily minimum? Give me that. Okay, I'm going to make at least 15 calls a day. Fantastic. What's your daily exposure goal? Number of people you're going to get in front of your idea. Oh, I'll do three a day. Great. So here's what I want you to do. You're going to take a, a, a can of Alpo because that's really good. It's got some good nutrients in there. The Alpo dog food, that's like really good dog food. And you put it on your desk or you put it on your nightstand, wherever you spend most of your time. And if you haven't hit that number before going to bed, you, you take a, a, a tablespoon and you send me a video recording of you eating the dog food. Okay, that's what I want you to do. Okay, got it. So I have now I have daily accountability because, again, you all know this. What happens when you are the sole individual that's responsible for the outcome of your success? There's no accountability. It's just you. So if you don't deliberately put things in position, remember, you got to position yourself for success then you will allow days and sometimes weeks and sometimes months to go by and you're not doing the work and there's no nobody's there to, to you're not going to get fired and there's no accountability. So guess what I have in my phone to this day? I have video of pe that people have sent me eating dog food because they did not follow through on their they did not keep their word. So you put these things in place and it's simple. So now what's going to happen? You're not going to just say something that you think sounds good. You're not going to allow the emotional hype of the moment where your mouth puts you in a situation that your ass is not going to get you out of because now you got accountability. So you say, okay, I'm excited, but let me think about this because I don't want to eat no dog food. All right. OK, so I work from 8 a.m. to 530 p.m. I got to pick up the, the kids from daycare, got to get them washed and fed, got to get them into bed, help them with the homework. That means by nine, nine thirty. Now, my time is, is my own again. I'm going to I know I'm going to be kind of tired. So what can I do? What, what do I know for a fact I can do? I know I can at least make 10 calls between 930 and 1030. And I know that I could at least do 10 voice notes. I could do 10 reach outs on social media. So that's 20 touches a day. And I can do that. I can do that six days a week. And then I'll give myself Sunday to make up for uh, uh, any any bonus time, any bonuses, extra overtime I want to put in. I can do that on Sunday. OK, so, Ed, here's my commitment. 20 a day, 20 touches. I got the dog food. I got the spoon ready. And you best believe I, I will not be eating no dog food. And you can and I promise you at the end of that 60 day period. Um, and again, 
somebody may say, here's my outcome, which means they're going to do more than 20 a day because they, they know they got a hit because that's results oriented. If you have an income outcome within 60 days, promotional outcome within 60 days, that's different because you're focusing on the result. So now you're going to do more than the minimums because you understand I got to I got to really push it because I, I can't control who's going to buy and who's not going to buy. I can't control that. I can only control my effort. That means I got to put forth even more effort to get it done. So now you're really going to be elevating your level of focus and intensity on that outcome. Or someone may say 60 days from now, I will have touched this many people. So if it's 20 a day times uh, uh, 60, it's 1,200 people, it's 1,200 touches. I will have reached out to and touched, begun the conversation, put them in a funnel, got them in front of the information, at least 1,200 people. So now you're, that's an activity outcome that you're committed to. Results will be a byproduct of that, they, and the re results are going to vary. You, you might blow past your initial income goal. You might be just below it. I don't, I don't know, but the activity is what you're committing to. But here is the most important part. You are cultivating and creating a culture of doing what you say. Keep your freaking word. And you're creating a culture of activity and accountability. All right. But it all stems from what? Keep your word. I have photographs of people with no eyebrows. And I have video of people eating dog food. If you remind me, I'll show you before we uh, get off the call. So second thing, okay? Second thing we're going to talk about today. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? It's a very important question. <laughs> very important question you got to ask yourself. I am I'm of the belief that you got to consider the source at all times and you have to hold the source accountable for whatever is being said. It's very, very important because not everyone is qualified to be in your ear, but there are a lot of people fighting for space in your ear and you have to have a, a process of discernment. It's a beautiful word, discernment, being able to delineate if this person has truly has my best interest at heart, are they really qualified to give me this information in order to help me get to this level or the next level of success? Um, and, and, and when you consider the source, it helps you to determine where your energy is going to go. So I'll give you an example. I was, I was starting my business and obviously everybody that was before me who had had some time and effort in, they were significantly ahead of me in terms of their results and their rank and income. And But I didn't base their level of weight with me on that. That's not what I looked at. I didn't look at what their current rank was or what their current income was. I looked at how they were moving each and every day. So uh, let, let me say this, because I, I was holding this for a reason. People don't like change. So what you're seeing here is a, this is a uh, portable charger, okay? And it charges my phone really quickly. And... I was in, when we were in Dallas, I forgot to put this in my bag. I left it in my office so I didn't have my charger. And I asked, uh, I saw Scotty B, I think I saw him first. And I said, hey, can I use your charger? He said, sure. And so I plugged my phone in using his charger. And like my phone is fully charged like within, it, it felt like minutes. And I said, man. And so I looked at his charger and it was different. It was uh, it wasn't exactly this, but it was it was this like it was bigger. OK, it was it was a bigger, different charger. And I said, man, where did you get that? So we we talked about we didn't we didn't get back to the conversation. And then I, I, I sent him a message. And he, he sent me a message back. So I go to the Apple store. 
And I got to give you the visual on this so you all can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I go into the Apple store and I, uh, I have this and I said, I need another one of these. And the, the, the lady looks at me and she's like, why? I said, because we need more chargers in the house. She's like, that's like, she's like, nobody's using this anymore. Like this is antiquated. Well, see what happened was I bought the uh, cord and I did not, I didn't recognize this. This is what you plug into the adapter, okay? It's smaller. I was used to this. See how much thicker that one is? It's thicker. So when I saw that I didn't buy this one, I was like, hey, I need this one so I can put it into this. And she said, no, that's antiquated. This is what you need. This is the new one. It charges your phone faster. Why would you want to use this? My point is, is that I was so accustomed and familiar with using this that I was fighting, buying like the I was buying the cord, but I didn't want the new cord. I wanted the old cord. I was like, no, I want what I've been using. She's like, we don't even make those anymore. And I was like, oh, I was like, thank you. You know, you you've educated me. I got this now. So people, even when when change is to your benefit, you will fight it. Even when progress is to your benefit, if there is a behavioral course correction that you require in order to be successful in your business, you have to know yourself and understand that you may still be fixated on ways of doing things that are antiquated. You may be fixated on bad habits that you've cultivated. Hence why I continue to drill down on your daily method of operation, your income producing activity, because maybe you have gotten away with doing two or three exposures a day instead of doing five or six. Maybe you have talked yourself into believing, well, if I only reach out to a handful of people a day, that's enough. When you know in your heart of hearts, you can do more. So let me get back on track, but I had to share that. That's why I was, that's why I had that in my hand. So <clears throat> who are you listening to? Because when you are utilizing discernment now, because it's really, really, it's more important now than ever, because you have all of these so-called, I don't want to say even the word experts, but you have a lot of voices that are vying for attention in your head. So I wasn't looking at who the rank was or what their income was. I'm looking at how they're moving each and every day. That's how I'm determining how much energy I'm going to give to their, their voice. So I'm living in New York at the time. And people who were uh, higher ranked than I was, had more time in than I did, would tell me how difficult it was to actually build something sustainable in the city of New York, people that, that lived in the city. Now, they weren't like significantly, they weren't like, you know, they were probably making whatever, three or 4,000 a month, give or take, but they were higher ranked than me. They were more qualified. But instinctually, I understood, first of all, that that's the wrong, those are the wrong words coming out of your mouth. Like, why would you even like have that thought? That didn't make any sense to me. Even though I didn't have any experience, I knew better. And so I had a level of discernment about who I was going to listen to. So he, here's what I said to myself. I'm going to listen to the individual or individuals who at least have earned over a million, two million dollars. That was my starting point, because that meant they had to have been involved in business for a certain amount of time. That also told me that they had gone through a lot of trial and tribulation. You don't get to earn that type of income without going through your ups and downs. And so I would simply say, well, give me your 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 take on building. Well, and they were honest. Hey, I've never built a team in, in New York before, so I can't 
speak to that, but I can tell you that, you know, here are the, the, the principles that work for me. They never said to me, you can't build in New York. They just said, here's what worked for me. So I had discernment. So you all want to want to have discernment when you are uh, when you're deciding who you're going to allow into your mental space. That's number one. Number two, sometimes in business, it's like the wild, wild west, because anybody can come off and say anything to you. And you don't you know, how do you verify what they're saying is true? And a lot of times in business, you can you can look at a person's track record. So I was having a conversation the other day with a, a very strong leader and he and I were talking about something and he was making a point and he said to me, hey, uh, you know, one of the gentlemen that I work with, you know, initially when I worked with this gentleman, he he was not a go now person. Right. He was a slow now person. Right. We got the go now, slow now. And then we got the, the pipeline, he said. And I recognized like it's not like I, I understood not to push him. I had been around long enough to know, like, I can't push that person. Just let them have their space. And now and now that person that he worked with is in the network marketing wall of fame and he's a seven figure earner, et cetera, et cetera. And so as this leader was sharing the story with me, I, I had a mental note in my head because this is what I look for. I'm not. In, listen, anybody can make six figures in network marketing. OK, any idiot can do that. And I don't mean disrespect to anybody who has, but any idiot can make six figures in network marketing. A few people are going to get to seven figures or multiple seven, like the number gets smaller. But if you can make six figures, you can make seven. OK. And I'm not saying that that's not an impressive outcome, but here's what's more impressive. How many six figure earners has that person produced? Have they built from 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 the ground up from scratch? How many seven figure earners has that person produced from the ground up from scratch? That's what I that's what I look at. That's what I'm watching for. Any individual can have their own trajectory of success. And this is what this leader and I were talking about. OK. And we were both saying the same thing, like, yeah, any one person can do something where you position it right. However, what he and I were both agreeing on is it's the number of successes that you create along the way. So when you're if you're listening to me or any other leader, that's what I would be looking at. That's number one. OK. And it's 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 throughout business. It's, it's throughout business. OK, it's not unique just to this industry. It's, it's throughout. It's, it's a rule. It's a law of business if you're paying attention. Second thing is this. If any of you are ever approached and I mentioned this in the first month, so most of you probably were not here at that point. If anybody ever comes to you that's in the club and they say, hey, you know, I got something going on. If you pay this much, you can have this course, myself included. Time out. Hold on get some consultation. Okay. Cause it's, it's, it's true. You're all adults. You can do whatever you want, but if I were you, I would, I would run it by my board of directors. I would run it by my board of advisors. Here what I, here's what I mean. So because we're entrepreneurs and we believe in free enterprise, we believe everybody has a right to go out and make your money. You can, if you're bringing value to the table, you can do that. And sometimes people get that confused with making wise decisions. So when I was first building, I actually my first team that I was building was in California, even though I lived in New York, because I had I had a good number of contacts from when I was doing film and, and television. So I started a group in L.A. and I would fly to L.A. once every two weeks. I'd spend about four to six days there. And I would build and then I would fly back to New York. Well, one gentleman that I recruited just met him at a networking event, recruited him. And I immediately got him in front of the room because I, I saw that he had uh, confidence, charisma. He promoted himself to me as a very successful investor and businessman. Now, I'm brand new, so I didn't know how to verify that. I didn't know how to read if he was, you know, 
really full of it or not. I was just kind of taking it in and watching how he was moving. And he was doing everything that he was coached to do. He was very confident in front of the room. And when I wasn't in L.A., he kept the organization going and growing. He would help lead calls. He was doing all the right things. So I'm, I'm flying back and forth, flying back and forth, flying back and forth. I started a team in Calabasas, okay? Now, any of you all from California, if you know Calabasas, that's a really nice area. It's a certain, that's a certain level of clientele that you're bringing into your business. There's a lot of network that you can tap into if you do it the right way. So the woman in Calabasas, she was probably in her, her, her early 60s, just a wonderful woman. I would stay at her home when I would go to build. And she was like fired up. She just felt like, man, this is awesome. I got, you know, I got a, a, a new lease on life. Great energy. I love this culture. We're having fun. And I got a call about, you know, several months in. Uh, hey, um, Ed, can you, and the, and the gentleman's name, his name is Bishop, say, Ed, uh, I've, been, I've been calling Bishop. He hasn't been returning my calls. Could you, is there any way that you could, you know, reach out to him? And I said, well, what's, what's going on? She said, well, she said, well, I, I, uh, I invested some money with him and uh, he told me that I was going to get at least a 50% return and I, I haven't seen the money since I gave it to him. I said, how much was it? She was like $30,000. I was like, what? I was like, $30,000? I was like, what, what, what were you investing in? Well, he told me that he had a connection with blah, blah, blah. I said, I said well, again, I'm new to all this. Like, this is, this is kind of throwing me off. I'm like, what? So I said, okay, well, let me, let me reach out to him, and I'll see if I can get you guys on a call. So I call him. And he's like, well, you know, we, we have an investment, but it takes time for the money to, to, to grow. I told her everything up front. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. I was like, oh, I was like, all right. Um, well, you know, let's, let's talk more about it uh, when we have the, the meeting tonight. So we have the meeting and he assures me that this, whatever this thing is, it's going to work out just fine. I was like, okay. So I said, make sure you call her. Just let her know. It's going to take some time. So I'm, I, and I'm thinking, well, you know, he came to the meeting. He's still here. Like, it's not like he's trying to hide. Maybe, maybe it does take time. I, I don't know what they're doing. I have no clue. Okay. I get another call about two and a half, three weeks later. Hey, uh, hey, Ed, uh, can you have your boy reach out to me? Now, this, was, this is a call I got from another leader. I'm like, why? He's like, he he owes me eight thousand dollars. Like, you know, I I, I lent him eight thousand, and he t he said he was good for it, and he ain't, now he's not returning my calls. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? Uh, uh, what why why would you loan Bishop eight thousand dollars? Well, because I saw him with you, so I thought you know I thought he was good. I'm like, but you didn't ask me. Like, if you had called me and said, hey. I'm about to loan this dude 8,000, what you think? I would have been like, no, I don't know him like that. But you know, so that was the second call. Third call, woman calls me, she's, you know, I can, I can hear her sobbing on the phone. What's wrong? Well, I, I can't get Bishop on the phone. Oh, you, you, let me guess, you invested some money with him. Uh-huh, how, how much? 60,000, it was my savings. Now at this point, I'm like, okay, this is clearly a problem. Like I recognize that. And I know what you all are thinking. You're thinking that I felt bad for those people. I did not. I was angry with him. I got to deal with him. But I'm looking at them and I'm saying, why wouldn't you just call me and say, hey, I'm about to drop 60K with this dude. The only reason I know him is because of you. What do you think? And I would have told you, don't do it. I wouldn't do it unless you got money to burn like that. I would have said to you, do not do that. Long story short, he obviously gets kicked out. He obviously gets excommunicated. He basically just vanishes. And we find out that all these stories he was telling, he told us stories about his daughter being attacked and, 
you know, like all this stuff was all lies. It was all just a bunch of, it was like he's a master con. This is what he does. Well, guess what? Now, the woman in Calabasas is looking at me like, well, how do I know you're not in on it? I'm like, yeah, you don't know. I understand your position. I can't, I can only tell you that I wasn't in on it. And you can only base that on my relationships. But I had to go through this whole process, you all, of, okay, now I have to do a better job of how I vet. And I got to train people on how to determine who they're going to listen to. The only reason they were listening to him was because I did not set the parameters. I didn't teach them how to use proper discernment. So I, I took my responsibility in that dynamic, in that situation. And so it became a part of the, the, the teaching tools that I use saying, listen, even if you choose to listen to me, you got to hold me just as accountable. You got to look at how I'm moving as you would anybody else. I'm not saying I'm separate from that. And I would tell people, if anybody that you see me close to comes to you and says, hey, I got this, I got that. If I were you, I would run it by me and a couple of people and your board of advisors first. Again, you can do whatever you want. See, here's the problem with con men and con women. When they take your money, there's really nothing that the law can do because you voluntarily gave them your money. Because you chose to listen to them, right? So when people come to you, and they will, when experts come to you, buy my course, buy this, buy that. If I were you, I would just run it by your board of advisors, make an intelligent decision. Am I saying that, that anybody that's selling a course, it's all a sham? I'm not saying that. I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars on books and courses because I just want to know, like, wh why are they teaching this? What makes it so good? Is it really that good? And I'm probably, you know, 50-50. 50% of it was garbage. 50% of it, I got something. Like, I was able to, to get maybe a, a nugget or maybe a, a good philosophy or maybe a good methodology. Okay? I'm, and I was okay with that. Right? Anybody here go to college? Anybody ever go to college? You know how much money you spent on college? Did you really need to be there four years? Did it really have to cost more than 40 or 50? That Probably not. 50% of college is what? Filler. It's just filler. They got to keep the lights on. They got to pay all these professors, you know, meekly salaries. We get all that, right? 50% of it is just filler. So, even though I've bought into a lot of programs as a student, I understood going in 50% of it was filler. But if the, the, the time that we spent, we, we spent, um, we bought a program. It was like, I, I want to say at the time, it might have been $20,000, okay? It was a quantum program. This is when T.R. Becker was doing his thing with Peak Potentials. You all are familiar with Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. They used to have the Millionaire Mind Intensive and Guerrilla Marketing, and they had all these courses. So we just bought the Quantum Pack. We were willing to invest that because we had spent already about three grand in six days in a live course, and we, we, we were like, okay, we see the value here. So there were steps to it. We didn't just throw down $20,000, you understand? So I'm saying all that to you all to say this. Use discernment. If somebody is coming at you, use discernment and determine for yourself and then talk to your board of advisors and, and make up a good board of advisors. OK, find people who have some level of experience, success, and it doesn't have to be in this particular business. It can be in business. You know, generally, it could be leaders in in your community, whatever it is, but people that have wisdom and discernment that can look at it objectively and say, okay, here's, here's how I would process it and here's what I would recommend and then you can make your own decision. But don't ever feel compelled to drop money for something. Uh, don't, like if somebody, for example, in my organization that I was building, I never charged people to coach with me because they were in my team, you understand? Like even though I have 
clients in a different realm, corporate speak, corporately speaking, because I was a speaker before I got involved in business, I would never charge people to coach with me in the business because I'm benefiting from you anyway. That, like I, that's, to me, that's unethical. Like I wouldn't do that. The only time I see justification to charge people, and I give you two specific examples. So I did an event with Les Brown. I, I flew Les Brown in. I paid him out of my own pocket to speak. He didn't, he didn't charge me his, his usual twenty five uh, to $100,000 an hour fee. He gave me a little discount, but I still had to pay him. So I did an event and I, and I, I did it for uh, my team in New York. And at that time, we had about a thousand people that came out for the event because that was the, the capacity of the room. And I charged them $40 each to attend the event. Now, why did I charge them $40? Because I had to pay for the event. I was going to lose money on the event. I knew that because it, it wasn't going to cover his fee, but it was going to at least pay for the room. And, um, and I gave them like a bunch of my CDs and stuff. I, gave, I, I put that in this big package. That to me was justified because I'm not trying to, I knew it was not going to be a profitable experience, but I want to give them as much value as I can. But that's as close as I've ever come to charging people in my own organization for something. You understand? Now, here's another example. A friend of mine has an event and she spends about a million dollars a year to put this event on. It's, it's, it's you know, she, she gets a mansion. She's got an incredible space and she charges, I think, a thousand dollars to attend this event. It's a it's a full weekend. And these are people in her organization. Now, to me, I don't have a problem with that because she earns over two million dollars every single month. So she has provided enough value. She is walking the talk. And if she's spending a million dollars, I feel it's OK and she's justified to offer that to her organization. And then and, and again, I say to the people in her group, it's up to you if you want to spend a thousand dollars. If I were you, I would spend it. If I get a chance to spend a weekend with somebody making over two million a month, I would spend that money. I've spent money on her event. I've gone to her event like it, she's she's really good. So I have no issue with that. But these are the, the examples I'm setting to you all, okay? I am not talking about someone or any individual that either comes to you correctly and would never charge you, or they say, look, I'm doing over a million, two million a month. My time is valuable. So if you want to come to my event, here's what it is. Cause it's costing me a million to put it on. I think that that's fair. Am I making sense to you all? Okay? So discernment is important. Because I've had people come in and they're like, hey, I just found this new way where you don't have to call people and you can make money. And we got a, a, a way of, of reaching out and it's only, you know, five hundred dollars. Just pay me five hundred dollars one time. I'll, I'm going to give you this. No, no. I'm like, wait a minute. What rank are you? What have you done in this company? You're not even in the, the, the inner circle. Like you haven't even hit the six figure mark yet. You're trying to sell people in our team, your so-called system. No, I'm not doing that. And when, when I was having the conversation with this leader yesterday, we talked about a guy, his name is Mike Dillard. And it, he, he created this thing called magic sponsoring. I think it was called. And um, so, and, and everybody was talking about it at the time. This was year, it's like 10, 11 years ago. And everybody was like, yo, this is awesome. It's an automated system. It's online. It's internet marketing. You don't have to do all this stuff. You just plug people in and blah, 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 blah. And Mike Dillard, the way he sold it was, he's like, well, look at me. I'm making, you know, whatever it was at the time, 200,000 a month. Well, all he did was he created a system. And if you bought into the system and brought other people to buy into the system, he would make more money. He had no duplication. There was nobody that was making 200,000 a month using his system. Were there people making 30 bucks a month? I'm sure. $300 a month? Maybe. 3,000 a month? I can't speak to that. So when there's only one person that is, is benefiting 
and there's a gap between everybody else, to me, that is a flag. For me, that's a flag. But if you come to me as a leader and you say, look, I am earning about, here, here, I have more respect for the person that says, look, I'm making about 12,000 a month. Okay, that's great. And I got 10 people making 5,000 a month. Oh, you do. Now you have my attention. Now, now I'm all ears. I have no interest in the person that comes to me and says, look, I made $50,000 last month, okay? How many people in your month made 25? And your organization made 25 last month? Oh, uh, well, you know, people don't, they're not coachable. They're not doing my follow my, okay. I, I have no interest in that. So who are you listening to? And you all have to pick, right? You got to decide where you're going to put your energy. How many of y'all understand that if you go online right now, there's 150,000 people that want, want your attention, that have something to sell you, have something to teach you? 150,000, easy. So you got to make some decisions about the caliber. What's the caliber of leadership I'm willing to give my time and attention to? What are my standards of excellence and expectation? How does that person live their life holistically? Like, I'm not looking for you if you're great in business, but you're a bum in your marriage. I'm not looking for you if you're great in business, but you suck as a parent. I'm not looking at you if you're great in business, but you have a, 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 a gut. You can't even see your feet. I have no interest in that. It's a holistic thing. How are you when the camera are, is not on? How are you with your children? How are you with your spouse or significant other? How are you one-on-one? -on -one? I'm looking for the holistic thing. Does your track record matter? Yes, of course it does. But it's not everything, it's how you move now. So one of the things that I started doing, so I started coaching while I was still building in network marketing. And the, once I started understanding business, I always equate what I'm doing in business with what I'm doing as a trainer or a coach. And it doesn't matter what business I'm doing, but I, I have anyone that's listening to me. I'm, I'm not asking you to do things that I'm not doing. Do, do you think that just because I've had some great speaking engagements and I've made some great money speaking that I still don't pick up the phone and prospect to, for people to bring me in? Do you still think that I, I don't have a, a means of reaching out? Myself, I don't have a system. I don't work. I've never worked with a speaker's bureau. I go out and I farm and I sow seeds and I do the work from the ground up the same way I'm teaching you. Is it the only way to do it? Of course not. I'm not saying it's the only way. It's just what I do. So to me, it's important that you can identify how people are moving, and then you go to your board of advisors, you take the time to cultivate a board of advisors so you can say, hey, I'm about to make a decision. It's not it's not a you know, it's not earth shattering, but someone asked me to invest, you know, five hundred dollars. So I want to get your feedback on it. Every dollar has value. Every dollar counts. Every dollar has the capacity to be ten or twenty dollars or one hundred dollars, depending upon how you use it. I would much rather you all invest that money in a way that we can give you the highest probability of exponential growth. So here's what I know. I know that what you're getting exposed to here, Monday through Friday, is the, the, the kind of information that leads to exponential growth. And it's long term. So even if we were charging you, let's say we're charging you whatever you, you pay a month. I mean, I think you all pay whatever it is, 80 bucks a month or 100 bucks a month, whatever. Here's what I know. I know that the value proposition, it goes up the longer you stay with it. Because as you grow your business, your income grows. As you teach this to other people, your organization becomes stronger, becomes more solid. As they teach people to teach that, your income continues to go up and everybody wins. Everybody wins. So the, the $100 a month, it actually, it means that you're, you're actually spending less over time because the value continues to increase as you apply the information. And remember how I talked about how you have a, 
a storehouse of info. You're not going to use all the info every day, obviously, but you're going to have the ability to go in here and source it and say, hey, I remember we, we went over this. Let me check my notes. I can address this situation because this here's what I learned in my training path. And years from now, you're going to be using the principles. You'll, you'll be reinforcing them and passing them on to somebody else. And so education costs, but it pays for itself, even though we're not technically charging you for this. It's just a part of your monthly fee. This is how you all build value.